Hello, my name is Kareem Ray. I am the founder of One Soccer Nation. Our objective is to help guide aspiring soccer players to achieve success in the beautiful game we both love. So, John, can you please introduce yourself to the viewers? Yeah, uh, my name is John De Benedictus, and uh, I'm right now the executive director for the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada, as well as uh, coach. Uh, I coach in the Pickering Soccer Club in, in Toronto, a couple of teams. And I also run a golden goal scoring, which I um, wrote a book called The Last Nine Seconds on scoring goals. And I do my course for players. Uh, basically, whoever wants me, I'll, I'll go to that part of the world. So basically, most of the United States and Canada I've been. And I also do uh, 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 sessions on based on my book. Um, and, and when it comes to soccer, you know, I'm a fan, you can tell there from world experience in 94 and, uh, and all sorts of things with soccer. It's my, my, my match. That's amazing. So John, I used to play too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first question I was about to ask you, can you, John, can you take us like back in time and tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, your experience with soccer? Yeah. So I used to play, uh, yeah, I played, uh, York university. We won a national title way back. Um, and then I played in semi-professional league called the National Soccer League for uh, called Toronto, Ukraine. Yeah. And uh, back in those days, uh, I guess a long time ago, um, we were one step below the North American Soccer League, but we had a lot of players that would come over in their off season and play uh, in our league um, for Toronto Italia, Toronto Portuguese, whoever brought them in. Um, and, you know, some, some of them were first division players in Scotland and Portugal because the money that they made back then wasn't, uh, wasn't fantastic. So they'd come over to Canada or, or uh, New York or wherever. We're mostly Southern Ontario, uh, New York State, Michigan League. Um, and they'd come and play uh, in summer in Canada or the United States because they wanted to make extra money. Obviously, uh, that's not the case today because they're, they're all playing for pretty big contracts. Right. Well, there you go. I used to be a goalkeeper. A goalkeeper, yeah. So what year did this take place in that you're speaking of? Oh, I, I was hoping you would ask that. <laughs> uh, 1977 is when we won the national uh, title for York University. That's a long time ago. And then uh, uh, after that, I got scouted and played in the NFL for a few years. I also started coaching quite young and I uh, got injured and I you know, couldn't play very long because I, I seemed to be always on the crutches for one reason or another with knees and ankles, and, and I got into coaching. And, and from that time frame, how has soccer changed uh, from then to now? Well, I mean, I think uh, you look at some of the best players back then. They're, they're as good as some of the best players today, in my opinion. Um, you know, maybe the fitness level today is, is, is more work technology with fitness. Uh, so you see the players on the field are running a lot more, maybe more sprints, they last longer. Um, but you know, with some of the skills back then of some of the players, Christ, maybe Oates and, you know, Best and Maradona, you know, they're, they're as good as the Messi and whatnot of today. Yeah. Uh, the one thing you'll notice when you watch it, watch an old game, um, you'll see that uh, we're connecting a lot more passes today. Mm -hmm. um you know you, you you see common 20 30 passes and in those days uh maybe except for brazil and italy and a few of the other teams they tried but one of the problems is you know um if the field is not pitch perfect and flat like it is today you know balls are bouncing around the front of the goals the grass you know we don't have the technology back then so if you watch an old game and and you look at the pitch um it's almost impossible to connect 30 passes in a row then um, for most fields, maybe in a World Cup where they really took care. But uh, so that's a difference that you'll see is that, you know, they're connecting a lot of passes um, because of, of, of the quality of the pitch. Certainly the, the best players back then were good. In North America, I would say there's a, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of good players now. Um, yeah versus back then where maybe there might be two or three really great teams for the country and now you know there's a lot more players a 
top players that start at a younger age. They're getting a lot of ball touches. Um, so you, you're seeing more volume of, of good players with good. Nice. And um, going back to your transition from, you know, you used to be a goalkeeper, you used to be playing on the field. And then how was that transition to then coaching? How was that transi transition for you? Was it easy or was it something that was like, I don't know if I want to do this? No, I, I started coaching while I was playing. I think I was 16 and somehow I ended up with a uh, an under nine team uh, coaching uh, kids and uh, and I enjoyed that and uh, and then I just you know, took different courses and and, and uh, learn more and so while I was um, coaching sorry while I was playing I was coaching even when I played for uh, for York uh, and we won a national I was still coaching uh, back then so sorry about that no worries okay Oh my gosh, we can edit that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, I should turn it down if I can figure it out. But uh, so yeah, I've, I've always loved coaching, uh, like working with young people and, um, you know, gaining knowledge and going to the conventions, the big conventions in the United States. Then you meet people and, um, you know, I, I've enjoyed it. I think as a goalkeeper, you're reading the game differently. Mm -hmm. Then maybe a middle player. Like you see a lot of goalies end up uh, either being soccer analysts or coaches, you know, a lot of the, the back players because they have to aim differently. So I don't think it was a difficult transition. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot to learn about coaching, dealing with personalities of the players and, and um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it wasn't difficult for me. And I also took his ed. So the reason I went to in, into that, uh, you know that uh, one is because of I started coaching. I want right. to stay in sport. So it all worked out. Yeah, it, it seemed like everything flowed. It was all in line. So correct. Yeah. Golden, okay, so Golden Goal Scoring Academy. So you are you that you're the founder of this. Um, so this started back in 2008. Why why did you start it back in 2008? Uh, so actually I started, uh, it, was, it was before that, uh, where I started piecing things together, um, back in the nineties, I remember, uh, the Canadian national team, uh, didn't qualify for the world cup in 98. Um, and I thought we had enough chances to score, um, and players made bad decisions. And I was saying to myself, like, my gosh, like, uh, why aren't they scoring? Why aren't they doing what they should do? So. At that point, I said to myself, because um, as, a, as a goalkeeper, I can tell you exactly what you'd have to do to score on me. Uh, and I thought that, you know, that's quite big, we're, we're small. Um, so why are players not taking the opportunity? So I started doing a lot of analysis and watching thousands of goals that I could get my hands on and, and taking statistics and whatnot. And then um, what I did is I, I put this, I guess course together, presented it course at the coaches. And then from that, that was in 2003. So from 98, 2003 was all research. 2003, yeah. I presented my findings to coaches. And then the you know, small group of coaches that came there uh, said, hey, John, I want you to you know, take my players or my daughter or my son and, and do, you, you know, do you do a course with players? And so um, I, I players course shortly after that. And after the first uh, year, I had a small group. Everybody improved their goal scoring. Nice. And then uh, I said to myself, oh, I got something here. You know, something that I developed has clicked. And then uh, the following year, I had someone else ask me. Got a girls team, and they were one of the top teams. They couldn't score. Uh, they, you know, they played their opponents but couldn't win games. So he asked me to work with this team, and then they ended up. Uh, winning their, their championship, they had the leading score in the league. They won the Barcelona Academy tournament, the girls team. And so at that point, I said, that's it. I'm not going to do it anymore until I uh, write a book about it and kind of claim all you can. And so I stopped. Um, so, you know, I really haven't done very many courses. In 2009, I went to Edmonton. Again, I hadn't finished the book. Uh, I had some hiccups there. Yep. Uh, and then when I finished the book, which was 2013, that's when I 
did a course. So what I do with my course is, you know, I, I contract myself group in Maryland called the Frederick FC uh, High School in Kansas that brings me in every two years. And basically, because it's psychology, um, if, I, if I do a course for, say, a player, um, he doesn't have to do it anymore. It's not like repetition over and over and over. Mm -hmm. 20 hours, I give you a lot of different ideas, and you're done. You sh it should last. And if, if now there's always some players, they, they don't get it. Yeah. You know, they're just in their own world. But most players have, have improved their goal scoring. Uh, and I've had, um, you know, players play on uh, national teams. Um, players get scholarships because they scored more goals, broken records. It's been uh, quite an amazing run. So, yeah, there's a long answer to your question. Yes. So uh, players that are watching this video, where can they find that? Uh, so they can go to uh, goldengoalscoring.com. Uh, or they can also go the Golden Goal Scoring Court. Change it from Academy because it's not really an Academy. You know, academies, it, it's a course, one time course. You take it once and, and you'll see a, a difference in your how you play. And it doesn't only work on scoring goals. There's a lot of things that we cover that I cover that, that help other parts of your game. Uh, certainly, um, I like to stress on goal scoring because few extra goals at the right time can change a player's career. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a couple extra great pass midfield might not do the trick. Right. Certainly uh, very noticeable. Goes up and, you know, even defenders, you talk about some of the great defenders like Beckenbauer, Carlos Alberto, now we got Alfonso Davies. You know, what makes them a slightly different? Well, not only are they defending well, but they're also scoring a few goals, aren't they? Mm. So that defender that scores a few extra goals also gets noticed. So it's the fastest way to improve your career is to score goals. That's, so that's why um trust that. That's huge. That, that, so the golden goal scoring. Yeah. Nice. And what, what about the book? Where can they find the book? Uh, again, same same site, the golden goal scoring course. Uh, they can go to Cardinal Publishing in the U.S., uh, uh, but you, you can find it through that website. Um, Amazon carries it, although the uh, reason Amazon makes so much money is that they're the only ones that make money and everyone else makes pennies. So um, I prefer that they go through publishing uh, or in Canada, they can like, go to the website, goldengoldcoin.com. and be able to find it. Nice. Um, so... Uh, moving on to technical soccer coach at Pickering Soccer Club. Um, you've been here for 12 years. So are you, still, are you still there? Are you still present? Yeah, Pickering, I coach uh, two teams. I have a U18 team right now and a U15 uh, team, both boys. Um, I've actually been in Pickering even longer than that because I started their camps in 88. With Tony Waiters, who was the national coach in Canada. And uh, then I took a break from coaching. Um, and uh, then I always said, I didn't want to coach my kids. Uh, so that's when I took a break. And it wasn't long after that that, um, you know, they wanted me to coach. They, they didn't think they were getting enough. So that's when I got, uh, started coaching again with Pickering. But I've always done camps with them. Uh, so it's been a long time. And uh, it's, it's one of the top clubs in, uh, you know, eastern part of uh, Toronto area. Uh, with uh, good registrations. They have a League One team, uh, which you know about. They have uh, uh, OPDL team, and uh, they're one of the top. You said you started these groups. So, uh, like, take me through that experience. How was that, uh, being starting these groups? What, what, what do you mean, uh, the, the groups? Uh, I mean, I mean, you guys created it. This is where it all began, right? The groups. You mean uh, coaching uh, in in the club or or with the with the court? Uh with the, what was what was the last thing that you said? The would you say court? No, the, the uh, yeah, the course. Uh, you talking about the course or or just? No, or like I mean, not, I've done just about everything. 
no, uh, no, the camps, yes. So you were part of the creation of, of creating the camps. So how was that um, experience from beginning to, to, you know, where you see it now or what it has grown into? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so the camps, uh, I started with uh, in, in Pickering with uh, Tony Waiters, who was a national coach for Canada, the only coach to take Canada to World Cup. And he had uh, written a whole number of books uh, and, 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 oh my gosh, and changing the, uh, um, I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, changing, <laughs> uh, Tony, you know, how, ch changing how we teach younger kids. Uh, you know, in the old days, playing nine aside on a pretty big field. So he said, let's bring that down to 3v3, more touches on the ball and things like that. So when we started the camps, uh, that's what we, we, we did. Uh, plus, I worked, uh, I, had, I had started the Corver um, coaching methods in Canada, brought, bringing those moves in, in some seminars that I was part of. And so we blended what Tony had in, in his 3v3 micro soccer, he called it, and all the different skills and, and things that he had with the Corver, uh, which is all mastery. So we got that started in, back in 88. We actually filmed, uh, even before that in 84, we filmed uh, our own rendition of the all mastery moves. Uh, if you go back, I mean, I have them on my website. If you go back and look at them, you know, I'm talking to coaches, Problems we had back then with a 12 year old, we don't have today because uh, kids are started on ball mastery, even here in Canada, young as seven, you know, six, seven, eight. So by the time they're 10, 11, 12, not a problem. But if you look at the old videos that I, that I put up there, um, 12, 14, 15 year olds are having problems with ball mastery. So, you know, if a kid can get lots of touches on the ball at a young age, uh, they're ahead of the game. Um, so that was, you know, and, and then the camps, you know, obviously there's academies that came in, like there's Power Academy and clubs run their own camps. So it's uh, Sigma, I think is another one. And, and Basam has one uh, oh, you know A&B Academy. So there's a lot of academies. Huh? No, I said, you know, Basam, I mean, I, yeah, he, co he coached me for four years, 2016 to 2020. Yeah. Yeah, but Sam's a fantastic coach. You know, he uh, he was part of the, the NSCHC, um, and he really liked uh, some of the Brazilian work that, that the um, Brazilian coaches uh, did. And uh, Arizona Academy has been very successful. I'd recommend uh, the Sam's Academy any 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 time to anybody who's certainly living in that area. Um, so uh, he's a well a well known. Uh, yeah. Academy leader here in, in Ontario. Yeah, I and agree. you probably met him. So obviously you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I him agree. And Marcelo, I think. Or... Yeah. 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 I agree. I would agree with you, and I, I definitely recommend A and B Academy as well. Um, so now the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada, um, executive director. So you've been there for twenty-one years. Is that were you there from the beginning or? Did you join? Yeah, so what happened uh, at the beginning, uh, you know, the, there's the National Soccer Coaches Association of America, which started um, uh, over 75 years ago. And they run these huge conventions in the States. <clears throat> Nowadays, they get like, you know, 15, 10 to 15,000 people attending every year for five days and they move it to different American cities huge exhibit hall and so Canada at that time a long time ago was called region nine and so uh the president or the uh, executive director of the U.S. Federation or NSCAA at the time now they've, they've changed names to United Soccer Coach uh asked Tony Waiters who started their diploma course but why not start a similar association up in Canada so they actually uh, NSCAA got Canada started and Tony recruited um, myself, uh, Gary Miller, uh, who was with Ontario, unfortunately, way last year, and, uh, and, a, and a couple others. So about five of us started in 94, the uh, NSCAC. Uh, 
so um, Gary couldn't do it anymore. So I took over on a, on a, you know, it's a volunteer organization. I took over as interim executive director, uh, which I still have. <laughs> and so it's uh, been a long time. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we have memberships and we started our own convention last year for the first time. Uh, we do a behind the bench uh, webinar series. Uh, we've done uh, summits and, and obviously with COVID, we have how many we do our convention. Uh, yeah. But every week we do a session. Um, so, um, you know, it's nscac.ca if anyone's interested. Uh, we're basically there to help coaches uh, with further education. It's not to replace any of the licenses that a in soccer is running. Uh, but, you know, once coaches want a little extra additional information, that's what the association is for and to, you know, represent coaches. Yeah. And I want to be respectful of your time. I know it's been 30 minutes. Did you have, did you have an extra 15 minutes with us? Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay. okay. We're in pandemic, so I can't do too much anywhere here in Ontario. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. So you went to York University, uh, honors Bachelor of Science, Physical, Physical and Health Education. Um, what is the importance of education? Oh my gosh, I think education is important. Uh, I think everyone should try and go, um, you know, get extra education, whether it's university or college. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it opens up doors for you. Um, you know, you, you meet people as well that down the road uh, might might be uh, coworkers, employers of you. Uh, you know, uh, but it, it's important. I think the more you learn, uh, the better better it is. Um, yeah. And certainly when it comes to uh, when I went to York, part of the varsity team, mm -hmm. you know, there's uh, you know you travel, uh, you. you experience things as a team um I, I thought it was fantastic and some of my best friends uh are you know are still from from teams of york opposed to fellow students you know fellow athletes you seem to be friends with longer yeah. more long lasting i find mm -hmm. so john what are three things that you would um share with aspiring soccer players that want to become the best uh you know the best versions of themselves on the field Yeah, I think, uh, you know, soccer or any, any sport, um, you know, the, the player, um, you know, the, the, you have to be obviously technically calm. Um, and that's, you know, you're competing with players who maybe are in poorer countries. Uh, maybe they, they're spending you know, six hours a day on the field. And so if, if a player thinks that they can do three or four uh, training sessions a week, and they're gonna make pro, I don't think that's gonna really happen, you know? So you have to be technically competent and you have to do, you gotta put the work in. Uh, so that's one thing for sure. Um, obviously fitness and your body in good shape, that's, that's obviously important. Demands of the game today, you know, if players can't run and last long, you know, you're not as valuable as, as a player that that, that uh, lasts a full 90 minutes. Um, there's a few things you can't control. I mean, you know, your your genetic makeup allows you to maybe run faster than someone else. Um, those things you can improve to a point. But if you can, uh, instead of play, uh, you know, run fast and uh, if you can play fast, so uh, because soccer to me is a, is a thinking game, you know, if you can make decisions quickly and more than not make the correct decisions uh, for soccer, I think that's that's vital. So, you know, sometimes you see a player that, that plays professionally, um, just always makes the right move. Um, not only are you technically good at making the pass, but you don't have to think. Um, and the bug gets to them, they've already, they've already made decisions of what they want to do. So you have to be intelligent on, on the field. Um, you have to be technically competent and fit. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, the mental makeup. You know, there are some players that I've coached that, you know, it's like they're not listening. They think they know it all. 
And uh, I think every little bit of advice that you get, you have to take in. Um, players, you know, sometimes players, you know, I find players that sometimes that are the best players at 15 or 14 and 16. And then, uh, you know, they're, they're not taking in the information because they think, oh, I'm, I'm the best. I tell you, you know, those players who are, who are, you know, just barely made the team, they're working so hard to get better and learn faster that quite often they'll surpass those, those great players that, that, that were ours at 13 or 14. Because not only is there the, um, you know, the growing part as you become an, uh, an adult, but, you know, if you're working hard or twice as hard as the person who's got, you know, who's gifted at a younger age, um, that person is going to be left behind. So, you know, don't, don't let your guard down. You gotta, you gotta put the work in. Yeah. Facts. And do you, through, through coaching, is it, have you found it hard to influence that 15 year old that, you know, that has the mindset of that they have, is it, is it hard to influence their minds to say, Hey, you got to work hard. You got to do these things for them to listen. Do you find it hard for to, to influence it or that they're not, receiving it or how would you help that player? I have a 20, 60, 20 rule that I, that, that just seems to always work out. 20% um, of the athletes that you're working with are just so into everything that you're, you're trying to teach them uh, that, that they're going to improve exponentially. 60% are, are, are getting, you know, better. But there's always that 20% that I don't think um, they're listening or they're, they're paying attention or, or, and I don't think you can do anything about those. I think, you know, we tend to waste our time sometimes trying to correct that, that player who just, you know, is not getting it and, or, or where, whereas maybe we should spend all our time on it. So I find that 20% doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what video you show them, what inspirational speech, it seems like uh, they're hoping. So um, just from my experience, you know, 20% is, you're not going to influence them. And, and hopefully those, those players will end up, end up you know, quitting the game or leaving or realizing that they're not going any further. But the thing is, don't blame everyone else. Mm -hmm. Oh, the coach, uh, it's the coach's fault or someone's fault. So um, I hope, hopefully uh, players who are, watching this they're not that 20 percent right yeah yeah that was that was the other that was powerful uh what's john what's the best um advice uh that you know you were given back in your 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 career of soccer um well i mean you, you experienced so many different uh ones i mean if you look at some goalkeeping perspective some technical advice that I got uh, one of my uh, coaches at York um, you know he said the smallest thing um, that I actually talk about in my book players would come in on on me and I, I'm rushing out uh, maybe I think I can get the ball and next thing you know they go around and score mm. and so he said to me again this is a technical part of goalkeeping when the player's coming at you uh, he touches the ball for that split second after he's touched the ball, the ball is free. It's no longer his ball until he plants the foot and the other foot touches the ball. So he says, if you're ever going to go for the ball, you've got to time, time it. So that the split second after he's touched, when it's no longer his, that's when you go for it. And, and, and so all of a sudden I went, you know, we, we were doing, breakaways and whatnot and I practiced and it doesn't didn't work I, my knees were all bleeding and and, uh, and then I realized that the only way to concentrate on that tiny part of the game was to get my head in there I almost had to be in, in a zone uh, really really because things are happening so fast but you know can you read when when that player touches that ball and, and so I started to get you know bringing the psyche into it, psychology uh, of being in a zone. And then I found that that was, for me, one of the strongest things that uh, Eric Willis was the name of the coach ever taught me. And holy mackerel, they, they couldn't score on me on breakaways, Eddie. 
long shots, that's another problem. But, mm -hmm. you know, so that was uh, from a technical point of view. It also uh, really made it the psychology important in the zone. And, and then the other thing that Eric uh, dealt with is we had some, an issue where one of our captains was always criticized and say, I kicked the ball out and banked it, you know, and he's on top of me and he's, he's upsetting. Uh, he's complaining about his defenders who maybe didn't get him the ball uh, or made a bad play. And we all went up to the coach and said, you know, we, we can't handle all this negativity. Um, anyways, uh, the next practice, our, our captain, I made a bad player next game. It's okay, John, don't worry about it. And he, and, and he was so positive and, you know, wow, it's okay. You know, cause I was a rookie freshman as they call it in the U.S. So all of a sudden uh, he helped, he elevated my confidence and, and all the defenders. And that's what I say we won a national title. So the power of, 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 you know, what you say to someone is, is another important aspect, I think of, of, um, of what it what can do. So, yeah. Uh, as I said, Eric Willis did a phenomenal job. Uh, and there's all other coaches giving you all sorts of advice. But, you know, we could spend hours. Uh, we don't want to do that. Of course. All right. Well, well, John, I really appreciate you taking the time to let me interview you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Was Was there anything that you wanted to share with us or... Well, no, I, th I thank you, you know, very much. I, I hope that, uh, uh, you know, you, you have success in your career as well. And uh, uh, yeah, it sounds like you're doing quite well over there in, in Florida. And, and hopefully you'll, you'll work up the ranks. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, what you're doing is, uh, is, is really good for, uh, for soccer. And, uh, you know, keep it up. Thank you. Thanks I really very much for having me. Yeah, well, I, I really appreciate it as well. Uh, where can the viewers find you or get in contact with you if they want to? Yeah. Uh, so my email address is nscac, which is uh, nscac at rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S uh, dot com. Uh, they, again, they can go on, on the website, uh, which is goldengoalscoring.com. Um, uh, with the association, they can go to nscac.ca, uh, not .com, nscac.ca. So there's a number of different ways of, of, of finding me. Um, or the association, if you're a coach or a member, uh, that would be fantastic as well. Awesome. All right, again, thank you, John.